What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC Fight Night Reyes versus uh, Yuri. Let's start the bomb. The first fight is Luke Saunders versus Felipe Corrales. And to me, Felipe looks like just a jiu-jitsu guy. He, I've never been impressed with his stand-up or his overall wrestling. It's really just his jiu-jitsu. I think Luke's got the way better overall wrestling, and I think as long as he's kind of conscious of the grappling, he can keep on the feet, and I think his boxing's just way better. I don't see any way Luke doesn't just kind of eventually knock out Felipe. I think he just keeps us on the feet, picks him apart, and eventually finishes him, so I'm picking Luke to win by knockout. Next is Andres, can't say his last name, versus KG Buller, and to me, I think it's basically just going to be a back-and-forth kickboxing fight. I'm leaning slightly towards Andres. I think he's just a little bit better. It's really hard to tell because both these guys... I only saw them fight one time in the UFC each. KG got knocked out. As where Andres was really back and forth, he just got caught, clipped right at the very end of the first round. So just because of that, I'm leaning towards Andres. I just think he looked a little bit better. And he was also fighting at light heavyweight. So he looked good at light heavyweight. So I think at middleweight, he should be able to compete. And I think he'll win a close decision. Next is Loma Lumbuki versus Sam Hughes. And I think this is just, you know, one really good kickboxer going up against an okay striker with some wrestling. I think as long as Loma can keep it on the feet, she wins this fight all day, and I think she will. I think she'll be able to keep it on the feet and just kind of pick apart Sam for three rounds and win a solid decision. Next is Kai Kamaka the third versus TJ Brown, and to me, this is basically two pretty good grapplers going at it. I think the biggest thing is I think Kai's got a big advantage in the striking. I think the overall grappling and conditioning, it's about even. But like I said, when one guy has one advantage somewhere, then they usually win. And because of that, I'm leaning slightly towards Kai. Like I said, on the ground, I think this could go either way. And if it is on the ground most of the fight, it could be a split decision. But I think if Kai's smart, he just keeps on the feet and just kind of uses his better striking to edge out a decision. So I'm leaning towards Kai. Next is Ronda Marcos versus Luna. Can't say her last name. I think that this fight's going to be a back and forth grappling fight. It's tough to tell with Ronda because sometimes she looks so amazing and sometimes she looks so mediocre. Like, every fight with her is a coin flip, but I do think she's the better fighter overall in this fight. So I think she's going to win by sub, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if she loses because, like I said, every fight with her is so 50-50. But I'm leaning ever so slightly towards Ronda. Next is Poliana Buentello versus Luna Coralna. To me, I, I do favor Poliana in this fight, but Luna did miss weight by like 3 pounds. So... It's hard to tell. Like, that's always a factor. I'm still leaning towards Poliana. I think both this fight's going to be pretty much a striking fight. But when someone misses weight by that much, it always scares me. So I'm going to lean towards Poliana, but don't be shocked if Luna wins just because of the massive weight miss. Next is Marab Davishvili versus Cody Stamen. And to me, the biggest thing for me in this fight is just the wrestling. I think we all know it. I think Marab is just a better wrestler than almost everyone he's going to fight. I think the striking's pretty close. Cody's probably slightly better, but I just think that the overall wrestling greatly favors Marab. I think this fight's going to look a lot like when Cody fought Aljamain. I think that it'll be back and forth in the beginning, but Marab's slowly going to start to wear him down a little bit. And the longer the fight goes, the more it's going to favor Marab, and I think his stronger wrestling is going to help him edge out the later rounds especially. I think the first round, Cody will probably win just because when he's fresh, but... I think Marab's definitely going to win 2-3, and three, and I think he's going to win a solid 29-20 decision just with the better, more fast-paced wrestling. Next is uh, Sean Strickland versus Christoph Jaco, and I know Sean Strickland's been looking really good, but at the same time, I feel like he's still kind of who I think he is, which is this slow kickboxer. And I think Christoph Jaco's biggest strength is fighting guys who fight like him, who do this slow kind of kickboxing style. I think that you kind of have to go at him a little bit, and I feel like Sean Strickland can do that, but a lot of the time he does, he likes to just lay back and like fight this slow pace. And if it's just this slow pace kickboxing match, I'm leaning ever so slightly towards Jocko. I just think he's a little bit better at that, and I think that, like I said, these guys fight very similarly. Strickland definitely has more punching power. I don't think it's by much, but I just think Jocko's a little bit better at the technique when it comes to just that slow, long-range kickboxing fighting. So... I'm going to lean towards Jocko to win a really close decision. Next is Ion Kutilaba versus Dustin Jacoby. And I think this all depends on round one. I think that if Ion can really use his wrestling and just beat up Jacoby on the ground and finish him, then he'll win. But I think if Jacoby can really defend those takedowns and drag it into like rounds two and three, 
I think this greatly favors him. I think Ion does not have a great gas tank. And I think Jacoby doesn't have an amazing gas tank either, but I do think that the longer this goes, it's going to favor him because I think he doesn't explode as much. Like, everything Ion does is kind of like big explosions. As where Jacoby, like, he does explosions, but he does to, like, you know, he, he likes to do methodical kickboxing because he just has so much power with his striking overall. So he can fight at a slower pace and kind of just drag it out into later rounds. And I think if he does that, he'll probably win. I think all he has to really do is stuff those early takedowns in the first round and just be careful of the striking in the first round. Because, like I said, I think the longer this goes, the more he's just going to be able to pick um, Ion apart. So I'm leaning towards Jacoby. I think he's going to get a second or third round knockout. In the coming event, we got Jiga Jakadze versus Cub Swanson. And people are so high on Jakadze right now. And it's really kind of weird just because of how many fights he's had that are so close. And people were really highlighting his last win, which he won by KO, but that was against a guy who took that fight on like three days' notice, and his record was like seven and two or seven and three. Like, you know, the good people Jakadze's fought have been really close fights. Like I thought he won them, but you know, like the Jamal Emers fight and um I forget the other fight he had that was a really close split decision. But the real the good people he's fought were really close fights, and especially when they use the grappling. Like one thing I've noticed is that his last couple of fights, he's been fighting like these strikers especially his last two, and they didn't have amazing records. It was like these mediocre guys that he just kind of was able to pick apart because they didn't have the wrestling to take him down. Cub definitely has the wrestling to take Geiger down and make this kind of what the Jamal Emers fight was, where it was like on the feet, it's kind of close, Geiger's probably a little bit better. But on the ground, I think Cub's going to have a big advantage. I think Cub might even submit him. I think that Cub, you know, is a really solid black belt. We don't really see him use his jiu-jitsu that much, but I wouldn't be shocked if he does it in this fight because, like I said, whether he's on top or on bottom, I think he's got the advantage in the grappling, and I think he has the advantage in the conditioning because I still think Gaiga slows down a little bit when he gets pushed really hard. We just haven't seen him get pushed really hard in his last two fights, but, you know, I think Cub is definitely that guy. I think Cub can definitely push into him, get this to the ground, and make it kind of a dirty fight, and I wouldn't be surprised if come round three, Guy goes way more tired than Cub, and Cub eventually wins by submission or TKO from ground and pound or something. So I'm leaning towards Cub. I think this will probably be fight of the night, personally. I just think Cub has the better conditioning and the better grappling, and the longer this goes, the more it's going to favor him. Finally, in the main event, we got Dominic Reyes versus Yurik Prohaska. And to me, this is one of those fights where it's like the guy who lands the big shot first wins. I think these guys both have these, like, these big kind of flashy striking styles. You know, Yuri obviously more than Dominic, but... I just think that they both like to go at it. They both like to throw big shots, and they both like to kind of mix it up striking-wise. I don't think there's going to be a ton of grappling in this fight. Neither guy actively looks for takedowns like they will, but they don't really do it that much. I think they're both just going to be trying to knock each other out the whole fight. They both tend to fade a little bit as it goes on. I'd say they have, they're about dead even in the conditioning. It really is just like who lands that big shot first because they both are really, really good strikers. And it's such a coin flip, but I'm leaning ever so slightly to Yuri. I do think Yuri just has a little bit more punching power, and I think that's what's going to favor him. I think Dominic's probably a little bit more tighter with his technique, and that will probably help him a little bit. But it's just so freaking close that it could honestly... I could see either guy knocking the other one out in the first round. But I'm just leaning ever so slightly towards Yuri. I think he's, like I said, I think he hits a little bit hard, and I think he's a little bit faster. And so, like I said, ever so slightly, but I'm leaning towards Yuri to win by either round one or two KO. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.